Good evening and thank you for joining us on Capital Market this weekend. I'm Temple Ashadju. Come along and together let's drill down into the world of money making through the Nigerian capital markets to understand how major instruments in our frontier markets fared in the just ended month of October. Uh, get to know what November has in stock to remember and of course get to understand some form of, uh, forward guidance from our analysts. So if you're an investor, uh, this is the time to sit back and just follow the program. We're on Twitter, Channels TV, and of course, at CTV Temple. Those are the two handles where you can follow. Uh, there you may leave your lines for us to see your reactions and, of course, probably try to speak to that. Let's start off with some of the uh, numbers that we need to review, and that's the markets here, starting with the NSE, where the equities market activities on the domestic boards were bearish during the week as the all share index shed some 2.38 percent to 32,124.94 points, halting a three week bullish run. Three of the five sessions of the week closed in the red amid sessions of profits taken by foreign investors mainly. Uh, consequently, the year-to-date losses increased to 16% absolutely. The negative performance was driven by declines in the shares of FBN holdings, which came down some 15% week on week. ETI, which is uh, down uh, some 4.48%. Guinness fell some 5.2%. Dangota Sugar in the consumer goods segment came down some 10.9% this week. Dangota Cement also declined by some 2.9%, while Nestle fell 1.5%, uh, and Seplatz shed some 3.1% in its share price. Uh, on a sectoral basis, the industrial goods sector fell 4.06%. Index uh, of that, uh, in the, the indices now was is followed by consumer goods segment, which also declined some 3.25%. Oil and gas segment also fell 2.62%, just like the insurance sector drift by some 2.37%. Um, you got a banking sector uh, experiencing the uh, slightest decline, which is just 0.38% in terms of its indices. The market breadth was negative with 47 losers and 17 gainers, uh, led by Presco, so the gainers table, and of course, Unity Bank that fell uh, massively as a result of the initial uh, news that came in on that company. Unity Bank was initially suspended by the Nigerian Stock Exchange and subsequently, upon the release of its earnings uh, that came in late Thursday and was uploaded on the website of the NSE on Friday morning, that suspension was lifted by the NSE. <clears throat> Let's go to the fixed income markets where trading in the bond market remained bearish on the back of continued sell-offs uh, by foreign investors. Average yield widened by some 21 business points week on week to 15.27 as the yields continue uh, to expand across the shorts, the mid side of the curve, and of course the long end of the curve. That follows sell-offs on the January 2022, Ju July 2020, uh, 2030, and of course July 2034. For yesterday, the uh, 2nd of November 2018, you got the March 2027 experiencing uh, more sentiment from investors, 2.70 billion, uh, billion uh, naira worth of B, uh, bonds now uh, transacted on that particular paper, March 2020. 27, which was priced at 103 Naira 80 Kobo, and you got uh, just 10 deals there. Uh, in terms of the total deal, there was 50, valued at 10.64 billion Naira. But for the Treasury bills side of the market, activities was bullish uh, based on some kind of robust liquidity that we had in the system. As a result, yields fell by some 29 basis points on average week on week to 13.44%. Demand was spread across the shots, the mid and the uh, long, long end of the curve. But the 20 day to maturity now saw some contraction of 314 basis points and of course 104 uh, day to maturity bills saw some 67 basis points uh, contraction in terms of yield. Uh, there was sell off on the 314 DTMs, that's the day to maturity, 
and therefore we saw the uh, yield expanding by some 27 basis points. But there was also a bit of a primary market auction this week. The CBN fully allotted 145.63 billion naira worth of bills at uh, highest top rates as expected uh, in the system and projected by a lot of analysts. If you look at the numbers we have on the screen, they represent the sales we had yesterday at uh, the FMDQ secondary market, where the November 2018 uh, papers across the different DTMs there were the major bills that investors really had their attention for yesterday by way of um, <clears throat> contraction. We saw more interest there, and that represents uh, some of the kind of contraction in yields that we've explained, we had explained earlier, as we saw across the short side and the mid side of the curve. Well, for the unquoted securities market, which represents the NASD OTC, you have the USI contracting some 2.19%. As uh, so a result of some profits taken there as well, market capitalization settled at 474.49 billion naira. It wasn't too good in terms of the volume, value, and of course the deals week on week because of the, the kind of sell-off that we've seen across the counters there. Let's quickly look at a couple of earnings that came in this week and following the impressive earnings reported at the second half of the year, the Nigerian Aviation Handling Company, NACO Avians, has reported some 7.25 billion naira turnover for the nine-month period ended September the 30th, 2018. NACO's profits before tax surged to 730. 31.8 million naira, representing a 107% increase over the 336 million naira recorded during the same period last year. Now, profit for the period rose to 601.3 million naira on the back of active infrastructure in the Lagos and Abuja facilities, uh, boosting service delivery and processes for export and imports. The ground handling company for West Africa, as the biggest, recently announced Mr. Saindi Oladapo as its new chairman as investors' interest in aviation service firm continues to rise. <coughs> Now, investors are also receiving uh, UAC Nigeria's third quarter 2018 results with mixed feelings as the revenue for the conglomerate falls some 18.3% to 55.7 billion naira. 